Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Title Talk. We are doing it one day later than our typical Title Tuesday, and we did it for a reason. As you saw, we're bringing on two of my friends and clients, and today we are talking about quarter two stats, and we're talking about what we are seeing in order to move into quarter three. So today we are going to be joined by my friend, uh, Dan and John, real estate agents as well as real estate investors. Uh, so guys, welcome to the show today. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks for having us. Good morning. Thanks, Kevin. Good morning. So as I, you see, I post in a lot of stuff, you know, the, the typical of what everyone said was going to happen when March came, global pandemic hit. We, we were ending quarter one and, and things were looking pretty sad. And we said, well, we don't know how quarter two is going to go. Uh, and then they, they instituted the PPP loans and all of these SBA uh, funding programs. And I think one of the things that I found by the end of June is that we ended June fantastic. We ended a very strong, uh, we ended a very strong month, stronger than we thought. We ended the quarter stronger than we expected. And one of the things that I uh, found out is that the system of what the government was giving as far as the PPP money to help uh, uh, small businesses survive, helped us survive. We utilized the money for what it was supposed to, it went 100% to payroll. Uh, we didn't put it to anything else other than payroll. We kept everyone on. And we found that we ended June stronger than we ever expected, which is what sparked our idea to do this interview with uh, uh, Dan and John today, just to kind of talk about what we're seeing. Um, so, Dan, you go first. Tell everyone a little bit about you just so they, they know who's on the show today. Sure, absolutely. Thanks for having us, Kevin. My name is Dan DeMont. I'm the team leader for the Home Source team at Keller Williams Innovations here in Boynton Beach. Um, I've been in real estate in different capacities for 17 years now, uh, with the last five years being exclusively focused on residential sales and private investment uh, property management. Um, and you, you're right, the intro couldn't have been better. Um, you know, it's been a strange time uh, given the pandemic when it all hit, everyone panicked. Um, but fortunately, there's been a lot of great leadership, particularly in the real estate industry, that said, hey, this may not necessarily affect the real estate industry. It may create some positive opportunities. And as interest rates and the interest mortgage market got settled, um, that came to fruition. Um, so we've had some really interesting things going on over the past few months. There was an article that um, was posted the other day across many of the major news outlets, um, which I think prompted this conversation. You had posted it, as did I, um, you know, where the, the news was talking about the, the May stats. You know, the news is always 60 days behind the people who are in the field. And the May stats were much higher than expected. And I commented to you that, you know, if they thought May was good, wait until they see June. So we're here. Um, I've got some of the latest stats. Now, these are very preliminary um because the official stats won't be released for a few you know weeks until the, you know everything closes out but based on mls data alone um pending transaction palm beach and broward county more than doubled in the month of june as compared to may so may palm beach county 532 transactions under contract june 1267 broward county may 765 under contract June 1,793. Um, so major new activity for real estate agents who've been in the field. Um, they absolutely were seeing this happen. Properties were going under contract one day, three days, five days on market, very high prices. Um, the inventory is at an all time low. Sold properties are up as well. So uh, May to June, May in Palm Beach County, 1,500 properties sold June to over 2,000. Uh, Broward County in May, 1,500 sold, June over 1,900. Um, so there's been a lot of movement. Properties are going off the market faster than they're coming on. Um, that's driving prices up. That's uh, keeping buyers really engaged and really active. Um, we're looking at low days on market. And really what's spurring this activity is coming going back in time to March when COVID hit, sellers in mass took properties off the market right so inventory which started low in march took a nosedive um and once the government stepped in and stabilized the mortgage market the interest rates have come down dramatically which did 
two things. One, it moved buyers off the sideline because the rates were unbelievable. Two, it increased 10 to 20 percent, depending on what price point you're looking at, the amount of purchasing power buyers had. So if someone was qualified to buy a $280,000 home in March, they can now buy a $320,000 home. And that's a big difference. So that's getting buyers really actively in the market, driving the inventory really low. And real estate professionals were focusing our efforts in, you know, how do we make this a sustainable market? We've got to get inventory up. We've got to get properties on market. So our team is 100% focused on soliciting sellers to bring new inventory to market because there's not a better time to sell in terms of higher prices, their terms, quicker closing. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, thank you for those numbers, by the way. I appreciate you taking the time to put them together. You know, everyone is always, you know, doom and gloom. You're watching everything on, on TV. You watch the news. You watch the, the media. Uh, on Facebook, we were just talking about people that are always, you know, they just want to find something negative in everything. And I tell people that I really focus on on three aspects when I when I start looking at our numbers and I do our projections to see you know, can we keep everyone employed? How many deals do we have under contract? And the three things I look at are the stock market. It has rebounded, had the largest um, second quarter growth, I think they said since 1987. Um, so yeah, we, we took a hit, uh, but now we're coming back. So for those that got scared and pulled all their money out when it tanked, you lost some money. For those that left it, you're gonna be okay. You know, we look at the interest rates, an all-time low. Refi market is at an all-time high. You know, borrowers are still getting loans. You know, and then we look at unemployment. Obviously, we had a spike in unemployment. But when you look at what is fueling payroll reports, uh, ADP just released something talking about payroll reports for May uh, and then going into June. And they're saying very favorable to see the increase in payroll. So we're going to see that the unemployment numbers are going to rebound. So, you know, we, we like to bring people that are uh, boots on the ground, people that are doing deals, not people that are going to just sell you a dream, uh, which is why I wanted to bring both of you on today. Um, so, John, let's hear from you a little bit. Tell everyone a little bit about you. I know you have a unique, uh, different focus in it. Obviously, you're a real estate agent, um, but you speak a lot from the investment side as far as doing investor deals as well as real estate. Yeah, th thanks a lot, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, so uh, about 10 years or so ago, I was in corporate America and I, I knew that there had to be another way to make money on my own without worrying about 401k and worrying about the stock market and just taking control of my own, you know, my own destiny. So I, so I met up with, I met Dan, um, started investing, well, started my education, that was the most important thing. You know, learning, attending meetings, that's where I met you at, you know, at one of the, uh, one of the RIA meetings you know, educating um, to learn all the different aspects and then concentrate on one specific one. And my my specific area that I concentrated on was multifamily. So I, I was able to to utilize my um, my 401k plan and purchase start purchasing duplexes. You know, with, with Dan's help, because I was still learning, we started building a portfolio of multifamily properties. And then I was able to eventually um, retire from corporate America, utilizing that strategy, and then eventually led me, you know, as Dan mentioned earlier, we're, we're now building a, uh, building a team of, of realtors, and now I have my realtor's license as well. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the unique things I like about you is every event I go to, it's not even just the one event, but every RE I go to, every real estate event I go to, you're there absorbing the information. And I think it's unique because it shows that you know, you're successful at it. And, you know, this isn't about get rich quick. This isn't about, you know, you're going to go buy this fancy course and you're going to make a lot of money. You know, you're going to hear the person talk about, you know, investing in, in self-storage facilities and you're going to make so much money. You know, I drive down McNabb Road to get to work going uh, west to east. And I see along McNabb Road, there's all these storage facilities. I'm always looking at them and I'm like, man, someone's making money on these things. It would be nice to own one. I'm like, you know what? I do what I do well. So I don't want to get involved in that arena because for me, you need to stick to something. And what you did is very unique because you come to the meetings, you absorb all the information, you network with all of the industry professionals, and you stick to what works for you. Just like me, I stick to title, you stick to what works for you. So you met Dan and you've built a great name for yourself. But the thing is, is you keep coming back. And 
for those people that are watching, especially during times like this, I wrote about it in my book, Rescue Your Business, that you need to be consistent. You know, uh, Lex Levenrad runs a, a local re and he talks about how I was there at the first meeting and we had three people. And then the next meeting, it was just me and him. And the next meeting after that, it was five people. But meanwhile, 15 years later, we're still going to the meetings. We're at every meeting. We absorb the information. We're meeting lots of new people and we're continuing to push forward. And I think that's really unique. So uh, kudos to you for for doing that, because obviously to be able to give up corporate America and build an investment portfolio is something that most dream of, especially the ones coming to the meeting. You're in the top probably one to three percent at those meetings whether you know it or not, well, everyone else just comes there and dreams to be there. So thank yeah, you. And that, that's, a, that's a good point that you make that people go to the meetings. Cause like you said, I, I've been seeing you at those meetings consistently now that I've been involved for five, six years or so. And every time I meet a new investor, the first question is, you know, how do I do it? I'm like, well, there's a million different ways to make money in real estate, but you have to focus and, and focus on one. And then once you become an expert at that, then you can move on to the next one. But, you know, stay focused and learn all you can on that one item that you're, that you're focused on. And to me, it was multifamily, you know. And, and the other thing is you can always go, you know, the book that, I, that got me started, which everyone's going to say is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. You know, but I also been to one of his presentations and they want to school you for $30,000 to learn what they learn. And that doesn't, you don't have to do that. That's right. You just have you to get stay the education by going to the local readers. You get the education by reading, podcasts, and such. Well, well and I'm going to add into John's credit, you know, and Kevin, you made this point, which is, you know, it's not a rich gift, rich quick uh a scheme or or a game right and, and john and i got together really early in his process which was fortunate for both of us um and we outlined a plan and we said you know i laid out the opportunity for him for over a five-year period where we could go with this and he was um i was fortunate that he was willing to put his trust in me and he was fortunate that we were on the same page for what we could create for him and in in working that plan listen it's not to say that we haven't tried things that were off the plan and not try mm -hmm. to say that those things didn't even go that well um we had a share of bumps but john's consistently come back to what his focus was and he's built a tremendous portfolio for himself now and now i'm i'm super excited to be part of his next phase which is starting to share that information with other people, show them that it's possible, help guide them through the process. He knows a tremendous amount about self-directed IRAs, qualified retirement plans, how to finance transactions involving that kind of capital. So if someone is in corporate America, is looking for a way to start building a passive income stream, build a real estate investment portfolio, and create that pathway for exiting corporate America. John is the guy. John is, he's the sensei on that one. And I, I'm really excited to be part of helping him share that message and, and consult people. Absolutely. And we're going to go back to him and talk about that in a second, because I think that is really unique. Um, but I want to flip it back to you, Dan. So we were talking before we started the live feed, you know, we met up at, at the Palm Beach Ria, uh, and, and obviously, you know, we built a relationship and then you came down to David DeWeck's meeting and, you know, it was just about networking. And I've told people, you know, my entire time, like, I'll give you any time. Let's just figure out how to make it a win-win relationship. So you said earlier, which I actually forgot, that you made a donation to uh, one of my charities when I was speaking, said, you know, let's get together and chat and, and you know, I'll put my money where my mouth is. I'm not looking to make the money from sitting and talking to people. I'm just looking to not waste my time. Uh, sure. and, you did that, and obviously, you know, we advanced years later. But let's talk about where you were when I first met you, because, you know, you were doing something really unique that obviously you, you do very, very well. You built a very good company uh, that you eventually then w was able to sell. So let's talk about property management, because I think one of the things sure. that a lot of investors come to me you know, they're they're buying a property, they're over financing a property, they're trying to manage the property for, by themselves. And the problem is they never get past property number one. Right. Sure. Then all of a sudden now we're, we're looking at a three month uh, or no, I think since uh, what, May, June, July, maybe even into August for this moratorium that people aren't going to pay rent. So now the landlords are losing, especially the ones that are over leveraged. The tenants are in pain, so it's causing a big mistake for cash flow. So let's talk a little bit about that and what you're seeing as far as the benefits of property management uh, and why it's so important for an investor like John to write the check as opposed to trying to deal with that himself. 
Sure, absolutely. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, we do have a, a substantial background in property management and have, um, I started a company uh, five years ago, uh, which we grew, which was a property management company called Rent Pro. Um, I sold that company a few years back and subsequently uh, returned to the business because so many great clients were willing to trust me and, and wanted me to you know, continue to consult them in that capacity. So we have rebuilt that. We have a team of three people on property management full time. Uh, we're managing over 100 units in Palm Beach County currently. We are actively expanding that portfolio. So one of the real benefits to hiring a professional third party property manager, particularly in times like this, is I have a much wider view of the playing field than any individual landlord does. Right. So if you've got your one uh, single family house or your duplex and you're renting it out and your tenants are giving you a hard time because of COVID and they have payment issues and things everyone is kind of dealing with that to some way or another, but I'm looking across a hundred units and saying, all right, what's really going on out here? How are people managing this? We can try a couple of different things. You know, we have a little bit of room to experiment in how we do our messaging to the tenants about things and see what's working, what's not. Um, so that's one of the great benefits is I, I can bring a lot of value in consulting and to the extent that someone is watching this show is a friend of Kevin, um, wants some guidance, I'm happy to make myself available for that. I can share a link on the Facebook where people can book 15 minute consulting sessions um, for that. They've got a specific issue on property management as it relates to COVID. Um, but being able to look at the, the wider field has allowed me to see that, you know, overall, most tenants are pretty responsibly handling this situation. The ones that are most affected are working hard, they're communicating well. And I will tell you that in our portfolio with very limited exception, the people who are not paying at all, and not making any attempt, I could have predicted would have been a problem before we even knew COVID existed, uh, right? So there are people who are taking advantage uh, of the situation to their benefit, and there are people who are really, truly having financial hardship and are working very hard and communicating with us to make sure that we can reach an acceptable outcome. Uh, for someone who's really not collecting now, of course, at this point, we're all on pins and needles for the next day to see um, what the governor is going to do. Um, to be honest, I can't offer any answer with that. Um, you know, he did it very last minute on the last month. Um, we'll see what he does today and into tomorrow as far as extending the moratorium. And then there's a much greater issue of how are the sheriff's department going to handle that? How are local leadership going to handle that? How are the judges going to interpret it? Uh, it's going to be a complicated situation for anyone who is behind on their rent and needs to look at evicting um, their tenant. What I will say is I'll plug someone who I trust greatly and is on the front line of that uh, field, which is Jaron Kelly, Kelly and Grant, PA and Booker Tone, are my go-to eviction attorneys and my consultant for landlord tenant law matters. Um, they're going to be, I'm sure, putting out an update um, if someone wants to get onto their mailing list, I would highly suggest it. Um, but they're on the front lines advising me. And I'm sharing that, my, that knowledge with my client um, as to what's happening, with, what's the law say, what's the reality, what the judges and the sheriff are doing, and how can we navigate that together. Yeah, absolutely. Karen, he's a, a really great guy. I know him very well. Uh, we, we've had lunch together a couple of times and, you know, it's always great to bounce ideas off of people that uh, are, are actually doing deals. You know, we talked about it before. It's like, I don't want to bring on a real estate agent that's not, not doing deals. I don't want to bring on an investor that's not doing deals. And something that, that we had on last week, we had uh, Mark Evans on, who is a, a very big motivational speaker and, and does a lot of coaching and consulting. And he said, every day we're coming up with new ideas and new businesses and new strategies and, and new things that we want to do. And you know what? 90% of them fail. Yep. But it's at 10% that we actually come up with that works. So it's the same thing with, with everything. Like we were supposed to have on uh, Grant Cardone on Monday and he wound up canceling. You know, but we're constantly putting things out there. So if I book 10 big speakers and one shows up, it's still a win because it's helping somebody. So it's about constantly educating yourself, constantly networking, constantly just coming up with as many new ideas as you can come up with, uh, because then we know something's going to work. It's the ones that are sitting there doing nothing that are saying, oh, I lost money in the stock market. Oh, you know, unemployment is up. Oh, I lost my job. You know, I'm going to tell you with this COVID, I only know three people that have had it. And none of them have been very, very ill. Thank God, knock on wood. 
But the whole mm -hmm. idea and the whole concept behind it is, is it a media scare? Did the media tank the economy for whatever reason? Or is it something that's real? One death is one death too many. But the problem is, is we need to be focused on, on the economy. We need to be focused on getting back to work. We need to be focused on getting things going. And the governor, actually, I did see the governor extended till uh, August 1st. I believe uh, foreclosures as well. I know I saw um, evictions. You know, that's a problem. That's a problem because that means landlords are hurting. That means the tenants that want to take advantage of the system are taking advantage of the system. But like you said, is I do encourage anyone who owns property that you have tenants do the same thing I did when when I owned a bunch of rental properties was communicate with your tenants, yes. take something, then nothing and work with them to keep them there. You may take a little hit. They may take a little hit, but you need to make it a win win for everyone to do what's right, because even when it opens back up in August, there's going to be such a flood that we're not going to be able to keep up anytime soon. So it may take six to nine months maybe to get somebody out. I don't even know. But could you imagine well, well, and I was, to a big? Absolutely. Well, I will yeah. tell you, I've been telling you. Let me just, to telling, piggyback, you. Let me just to piggyback off of what Dan was saying regarding the property management. You know, when I first started investing, when I reading my books, it was like, I don't want to fix toilet bowls. I don't, you know, and people, and when I speak to, they've been, in, oh, I invested in a single family house, but it was a nightmare. Like, did you have a property manager? No. Like, well, that was something you consider, you know, and with, with all we're going through right now, you know, like Dan said, the people who were not going to pay, we're probably not going to pay even without this going on. So the important thing is to have a good property management company that will determine the right people for your units, you know, because without that, without that, you're still going down the wrong path, even if we weren't going through what we're going through now today, you know, so that's the benefit of, of the property manager. Are, the are right. all real estate investors wealthy and it doesn't matter if your tenants don't pay you? <laughs> right. Well, well, listen, right. So we can, you can always go, you know, you can go anywhere with it, but what I will tell you is, um, I, I've been telling my my landlord to want to know what is the game plan. They've got delinquent balances. We're working with the tenants the best we can. There are some issues, of course, um, and they're saying, "Well, what are, what happens when the evictions come undone?" And to me, honestly, my answer is that I'm indifferent to it because I want to be proactive and have answers before we wait. I'm not waiting for the governor to give me the solution to our problems today. And the other thing is, listen. To your point, Kevin, is you got to work with your tenants. You got to overly communicate. You got to work towards solutions because what are we going to set ourselves up for? The great, I'm calling it the great tenant swap of 2020, right? <laughs> Eviction gets opens up. Everyone who has an unpaid balance can't pay it or doesn't want to pay it to the landlord who's been pissing them off for the past 60 days. So people are going to leave. They're going to rent apartments from somebody else. Where you're going to be picking the tenants who left the balance somehow. It, it doesn't make sense. Keep your tenants to the extent that they're trying and communicating with you. Work something out. Like you said, everyone's going to lose a little bit here and everyone can win in the long term if we, if we work together. And that's the approach we're taking. All these. I can't anticipate what the governor is going to do. And like I said, even if he said tomorrow that evictions can go full speed, the courts aren't working. They're all remote. They're all doing COVID. They can't possibly process all of the pending applications, let alone the new ones that will flood in. So you're talking about realistically, if you were to file an eviction today, I can't imagine you would get someone out before the end of the year. That is the most unsustainable, untenable situation for me or any of my clients. So we've got to work towards solutions and we don't need the government to give us the answer to that right now. The problem is they're not going to give us the answer. They're going to they're going to just confuse us even more, you know, which is sure. why we were proactive and not reactive. As soon as they opened up the SBA loan, we said, let's apply for it. We may or may not need it. And we wound up looking at a huge drop in our numbers for for, um, you know, the end of March and then April and May were, were terrible numbers. But we were still positive. We we're still moving forward and we're still optimistic. And then look at June. It was a gift that we didn't even realize was coming. And then looking at the pipeline for July, it's as if nothing ever happened. Now, could that stay? Maybe. Um, but I think I posted yesterday talking about, you know, pray when things are good. 
you know, you always pray and ask for, for better things when it's bad, but why don't you, you pray when things are good and be thankful and, and appreciate right. the things that come? Uh, so let's, because I like to keep these, I try and keep them to 30 minutes. So I wanted to get to John because we talked a little bit about the advanced strategies. And, and one of the questions I'm getting, and I'm on a lot of these groups, are these people that are, are working um, every day, you know, they're at their nine to five job, but they have a, a huge 401k. Now, I'm the one to tell people I had I worked for a hotel in Times Square in Manhattan and I contributed to my 401k and I had a three percent match for many years that I worked there. And then when I moved to Florida, I purchased my first house by utilizing that 401k tax free for a first time home buyer. So I know it works. But let's talk about some of these advanced strategies that that are really creating your what we say is financial security, financial wealth by leveraging what you had in corporate America and showing the average person in America that has an investment account that they can do it too. Right. Yeah. So they're, they're the you know mutual fund companies don't want you to know this. It's not advertised that often. I, you know, somebody introduced me to it six years ago and I started doing the research. And like I mentioned, it's called the self-directed IRA. And what you can do is you can roll over money out of, a, out of an IRA and then utilize that and, and build, build a portfolio of rental properties within that, with, with, it, with, with that particular money. Um, there's also um, the ability to, uh, what, what also happened over the last, with the CARE Act, is that you now have the ability? What was included in the CARE Act is you can you can you can withdraw or take dis, uh, distributions from your 401k without the 10 percent penalty, which was always kept everyone from you know uh, accessing that money. And you have the ability to either pay it back within three years, so it's a it's a free loan for three years, or you can pay taxes a third each year for three years. Um, and I want to say one thing though that some people remind me when I ask them questions, I'm not a lawyer and I'm not, uh, I'm not a CPA. So consult with your CPA. However, I, I'm also connected with another gentleman who is an expert in qualified retirement plans. And you can also move that money from a self-directed IRA into a qualified retirement plan where then you can also borrow from it a, a hundred thousand or a hundred percent of it and then pay yourself back over normally five years but because of the CARE Act, they increased that to six years. So just just other other strategies and other ways to access capital, you know, for, for real estate benefits. Yeah, one of the things that's important, you know, we do always say that and we put disclosures all over that. Obviously, we're not attorneys, we're not CPAs. The thing is what I tell people is it's real boots on the ground. So like when I teach about land trust, it's because I hold property in land trust and I'm teaching you how I protect my assets I'm not giving you legal advice. Check with your attorney. But, you know, because as a title company, you know, we're, we're not a law firm, but I'm definitely giving you real advice and I'm bringing on real guests that are are doing this, not talking about it, but doing. I only like to hang out with doers. I like to hang out with people that are doing things every day, that are educating themselves, that are, are reading up on, on as much material as they can read up. But not only that, they're not just a seminar junkie. They're actually implementing what they're learning about. So to watch what you've done in, in purchasing these multifamily houses, and, and I hear about it, I see about it, I do some of the closing, some closings I don't do, um, but between Dan and you and, and David Dweck, you know, we constantly hear about the things that, that's working for you, that you're doing. Uh, you know, so for me, it, it's an honor to have someone on a show that is actually doing it. You know, so many of these people want to put the Robert Kiyosaki on the show. And that's like next level, man. That's like people, uh, you can't just get there. You need to learn to walk before you can run. You need to learn to run before you can fly. Those guys are flying. I like to hang out with the people that are walking and running and are actually doing it and, and creating a life for themselves. So I appreciate that, man. That, that's exactly right. I mean, to get into some of the details for John without exposing anything he wouldn't want shared, but... He's, when John and I met, he had a retirement account and an idea that he invested in real estate in one duplex. From there, his last purchase was a 10 unit multifamily uh, property with a bunch of Section 8 tenants that's throwing off great cash flow. We've bought other properties that were more opportunistic and created more value. We've more than tripled the assets 
of his self-directed IRA in a five-year period. So it's achievable. John applied that consistent practice and consistent pressure, and now he's in a fantastic position to be able to share his knowledge, share his relationship that he built, and connect people with um, the professionals who can guide them through this process as they did him. Listen, it's a dream, man. It's a dream that most people, you know, want to do when they talk about doing and they watch on TV, you know, all these people doing it, but they never do it themselves. So, I mean, you are just crushing it. So, it's Thank you. Thank you. you know, well, you're you may not realize it, but I see everybody. I see the dreamers and I see the doers. So, you're doing it. So, we're running out of time here. You know, I know you guys have some work to do. I want to get one last question for each of you. Uh, so, Dan, where do you see the the market going we're entering uh quarter three you talk about statistics from obviously may and june where do you see things happening for the remainder of the year sure um that's a great and tough question right none of us have a crystal ball um and if 2020 has shown any of us anything it's the world is an unpredictable place um you know, I'm going to share when I share this video, I'm also going to share on our team page um, a couple slides um, that I've been sharing with people. I've been beating the drum that real estate is going to lead the economy out of the recession. We're already in a recession. Recession is a rear view mirror statistic, right? So we won't know until September, or at least the news won't tell us until September that we've been in a recession. By the time they tell us, we're already on the way out. of it. So I've been beating the drum that real estate is going to lead the economy out of the recession. I still continue to believe that our inventory is unbelievably low. Mortgage rates are also unbelievably low. I can't speak to a national scale, but I can speak to Florida. The greatest concerns that I have for the future of this year in the real estate market is that interest rates will start coming back up, which which makes sense that it must happen. They can't go much lower. People are getting rates right now below thirty below three percent for a thirty year fixed rate mortgage. is unbelievable. Um, so interest rates will start coming back up as we get into the fall. For Florida, the great benefit of that is going to be snowbirds are going to come to Florida and they're not going back to New York to be locked up again. Um, so we're going to get a lot of influx of new residents coming to Florida, buying homes. The inventory is still extremely low. I expect that the inventory will settle up a little bit, but I'm anticipating and as are a lot of the research that I'm reading and reviewing that we're going to end the year with price appreciation up uh similar or nominal improvement in number of transactions as compared to last year and set the stage for 2021 to be a pretty successful year barring any unforeseen you know circumstance there i think real estate is transaction stats are going to continue to be a positive impact on the stock market and the economy well that's a breath of fresh air because there's so many negative nancy's online talking about doom and gloom uh you know and i'm not a doom and gloomer so it's great to hear from the, the actual real stats that you're seeing and the ideas. And like you said, there's no crystal ball, um, but we're seeing it, right? We're seeing it, we're doing it. And it's gonna take people like the three of us to not allow it to do anything, but continue to grow. That's exactly right. And I said, I'm gonna share some stats and there's one in particular that I'll call people to and I'll, and I'll wrap quickly so John can get a question in, but um, people need to understand that there were some major differences between what happened in 2008 what has happened now, right? Recession is not equal housing crisis. It did in 2008, but if you look at the last five recessions we've had going back to the 80s, uh, home prices only declined in two of those three, uh, two of those five. So three recessions, the U.S. went through, home prices continue to appreciate. So we have to detach the idea that housing prices and recession go together. This one in particular, because of some key statistics that were leading into the pandemic as far as the real estate market, which are low inventory when we started, and most importantly, uh, extraordinarily high average home equity. So people who owned homes at the beginning of this year had more equity in those homes than they've ever had in history um, as a cohort. When people have equity, they don't have distress because they have options. Equity equals options, whether that's a refinance, whether it's a home equity line or that selling the home at a price where they can continue to put some money in their pocket and move on with their lives if they've been severely affected by this. But there won't be distress as it relates to uh, people who have substantial equity in their homes. Awesome. Thank you, John. How about you, man? Where, where are you seeing it from? Obviously, the maybe the investor side or the realtor side. I mean, either or. Obviously, you're doing it. So what's going on out there? Well, well I, I always like to look, like I said, I'm a multifamily. I'm always looking at multifamily. And I also like to concentrate on Section 8. Because during Section 8, you know, you, you have 
you don't you don't have the problem of cash flow when something like this happens. You know, the government's going to stay behind it. You know, so that's where I continue to look. And 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 like I said, I just continue to also have you know the management company making sure that everybody is screened correctly to come in. You know, that we're not going to run into any of those problems. That's interesting. So section eight. You're still collecting rent on Section 8, I guess, right? Because it's government funded? Yeah. It gets wired at what, whatever the day of the month is. It gets wired directly in, and there's no problem. Interesting. I didn't even I didn't even really connect those dots thinking about it for the investors that are, are doing Section 8, that their cash flow is still coming in. Their rent is still coming in because it's government funded. That's interesting. Yeah. Awesome. What else? Any last uh, words before we wrap? Give blood. Wear a mask. Oh, yeah. By the way, we are doing uh, on July 10th, Friday, July 10th at our office, we are doing a blood drive and included in the blood drive is a uh, free COVID antibodies test. So they've included yeah. that. We twisted their arm to bring a whole bunch of them to test everyone for the COVID-19 antibodies. Different than the COVID test for the virus, this is the antibody test to see if you have the antibodies or if you've had COVID in the past. Um, but come out, it's going to be a great cause. We're going to try and get quite a few pints of blood. There is a link on our Facebook page. We have an event. Try and register. If you register and actually reserve your time slot, it'll be a lot easier. You won't have to wait, uh, you know, because obviously there may be a line. Knowing the events we do, there's a lot of people going to be here. So there'll be a nice little line to get in and donate blood. Um, but just register on that link to get the uh, get your time slot picked. All right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you taking the time to hop on this call. It's always nice to hear something a little refreshing as we're moving into uh, the second half of 2020, the third quarter of 2020. The past is the past. We can't change it. But the That's present right. and the future is the only thing we have control about. So thank you both for joining us. Thank Thanks, you, Kevin. Kevin. All right, everyone. Please share this on social media. Like it. Send us a comment. If you have any questions, please ask us. As always, don't forget, work hard, stay focused, never quit. We'll see you on the next episode, hopefully at the Blood Drive. Have a great day, everyone, and enjoy the third quarter. Stay strong, make lots of money. Have a good day. All right.